Very good. Okay, very good. Good morning, and welcome to another episode of Hard Factor. This is the first time I've ever done the intro. It is January 19th. And uh, Hitman 3 comes out tomorrow. For those of you gamers out there, I'm very excited about it. But mm-hmm. we got me. It's also Martin Luther King Day. It's Martin Luther King Jr. Day, too. I should say yeah. that, too. Shit. Martin yeah. yeah. That's, we, that's, yeah. We got me, the Beeve. We got uh, Mark. We got Wes. Will is, uh, you know, he might be having a baby. He's uh, he's off for the week on potential paternity leave for when that cannon fires. So uh, just the three of us here today. Uh, huge show. Huge show. We got a Martin Luther King Jr. Uh, tribute at the top t west you want to take it away yeah uh great job pat um that was just a fantastic good morning i'm glad you got to do that uh i hope you had a great fucking weekend you guys have a good weekend i did Did i I created a a new nightcap drink this weekend i don't know if you guys saw i didn't get through uh dry january um and i created a new nightcap drink which is like a kind of like a hot toddy and mm-hmm. it's it's uh, like two bags of sleepy time tea per person. You boil this on a pot. You put a bunch of water in there, uh, and then you add some like sugar, whatever sugar you want to add, like simply syrup or whatever sugar, fake sugar you have. Uh, and then you put some like squeeze of uh, lemon in there, mm-hmm. and and then you just pour a bunch of like Fireball in the mug, let it sit you know, room Ooh. temperature, and then you boil this, and then you pour the boiling stuff on top of the the like the rum or like the so, uh, a couple things. Why would you want booze before bed? I never, I, I never get well, that. It helps you go to sleep. You, you do this it, no, as well. It, it gives you mm-hmm. terrible sleep. No, not with a sleepy time tea. That's why you have the sleepy time tea in there. But it was working great. I did it a couple nights in a row, and then the last night, um, I, well, I got a little creative and decided to add some smooth move tea as well. And I don't know if you guys know what smooth move tea is, but it might as well be called don't move too far from your favorite bathroom that you're comfortable with tea uh and i had a day on the toilet today basically or on sunday okay okay yeah we don't need to know that's that's my weekend but yeah yeah okay the move good smooth move mark (laughs) (laughs) pat oh my you have some smooth move no i was packing and uh hanging out watching some movies i watched a movie called uh cut bank Mm -hmm. about cut bank montana had one of the helmsworth is in it it was pretty good but no, nothing, nothing big, nothing major. Avoided the football because the football team's out of the playoffs. I don't want to know anything about it. Mm-hmm. Some decent uh, stuff going on in the football. Yeah, I heard, we're, I heard. we're recording in the middle of the uh, Tampa uh, Saints game, and it was I think it's like tied at halftime. It's good, good games today. Yeah. What about you, T West? Up, uh, good. Uh, I was just about to say the the, the uh, Sony Open just concluded. Uh, Kevin Na pulled it out. If you were, if you were on the Discord, you can be on the Discord by going to uh, patreoncom slash factor. We have all kinds of channels in there, from news to Florida man uh, to the gambling corner, where uh, this uh, one of the gentlemen, uh, Tim A, and myself were talking about uh, golf picks. And if you followed along with us, you would have won some money this weekend. Um, we both got we both uh, took Na uh, later on, uh, so it was good. Good weekend. Stressful um, for you though. I had it was a grind. It really was. It you was really grounded grind. out, didn't you? I did. I was Watch, sweating. Watching the watching the scores, you were grinding it out, or? Well, you know, in golf, it's like you bet on. So we took Neiman in the beginning, and then as the as the players start to emerge, who's going to be hot? Then you pick pick them up as it goes, and then it's just like you got to you got to switch horses. You're saying you got to you got to put a little here, put a little you there. Bet, yeah, okay. fifty dollars, yeah. right? So essentially, like an hour of work for you. You bet fifty dollars, and then. Mm-hmm. When, when we got on the stream, you were like m- muttering to yourself mm-hmm. and uh, you're like, they better pay I'm me. I'm sweating. It was a grind. I'm sweating. Um, they it's better fun. pay me. Yeah. Uh, right. Lost man better pay me. Um, yeah. yeah. Can you can you get those golf picks in a little earlier so people can ride with you? Thanks. Well, yeah, no, you're good. You're good at you were good at the golf picks. Yeah. Uh, and, and, and Tim A knows what he's doing, too. Yes, it seems agreed. so. Yeah. yeah. Uh, but join the join the Patreon. There's all kinds of good stuff and uh, bonus stuff there. So uh, check it out. Um, right, well, anyway. Uh, Lots of people aren't at work today. Let's talk about uh, one yes. of the great American heroes, Martin Luther King Jr. Well, let me just do my thing. It's time to get back to reality. We're still in the middle of a global pandemic. A 78-year-old man who may or not be losing his mind is about to become president, surrounded by 20,000 troops and barbed wire. And it's Monday. Hopefully you're off today. And in honor of Martin Luther King, uh, here's a quote. 
um, I enjoyed while searching uh, for one to read. Uh, he says, uh, every man must decide whether he will walk in the light of creative altruism or the darkness of destructive selfishness. This is the judgment. Life's most persistent and urgent question is, what are you doing for others? Uh, so, hey, maybe in honor of Martin Luther King, uh, do something nice for someone today. Maybe a stranger, someone in need. Let's make 2021 a year uh, where we at least try to come together as a country. Uh, it shouldn't be hard to beat 2020 in that area. Um, so let's get to it. Right. I think he would like that. Yeah. Yes. I think so. Think about how brave that man was. That's fucking crazy. Yeah. How brave that man was. Yeah. Just to, just to to lead a revolution against an entire system that hated people of his skin color. Uh, yeah. It's Extremely pretty amazing. Brave. And it's very very upsetting that he had to die at the hand very of courageous a courageous man. Of, of yeah. a scared racist. Um, but yeah, what an amazing man. Yeah. So, amazing American. Amazing absolutely. American. Absolutely. Um, so, all right, well, let's get into it, guys. Let's, uh, unfortunately, I don't have all, uh, you know, uh, nice things to say. First up is a COVID update. Um, as the world's biggest killjoy, uh, Anthony Fauci, was at it again over the weekend, warning that more ominous strains um, out of South Africa and Brazil are being uh, very carefully looked at and that, quote, people need to realize there's more than one mutant strain. So he just you know, wants you to worry. He also said that, quote, nothing. The thing we really want to look at carefully is that does the mutation lessen the impact of the vaccine? And if it does, then we're going to have to make some modifications. We already covered this. Um, he also he said we're looking at that very carefully. You remember Pfizer did a study recently. Uh, they put out that said that the, the Pfizer vaccine was successful against a new strain oh, yeah. in the UK. F Pfizer said no, they got it covered. They said South Africa's straight mutation. We got the VAT variant covered. We got <laughs> well, the Pfizer's well, got it all covered. They well, said they said they got the UK one covered. No, they, they also know. said South Africa too. But oh, so yeah. after that, did they, they yeah. did? Okay, cool. I learned something pretty interesting, which is um, Pfizer and, and Moderna, and I'm pretty sure the other one were all licensed from the same lab that learned how to um, essentially fight the strain. So it was like one—it was a Chinese dude and, and a British dude and an American dude who were developing this uh, the way to fight the uh, the the virus with the vaccine, and like mm -hmm. pretty much they were way ahead of um, the vaccine. I'm sorry, the virus when uh, when it kind of hit everywhere like they'd been researching for six eight months so pretty much mm. it's all the same vaccine they licensed from the same guys it was like a s look over someone's steal their answers from their test type deal like, like no oh, it was like what, moderna what do you like, got oh. what do you got moderna what do you got pfizer is that a yeah, c for, for number 23 they okay. right. all the same info i'm pretty sure right, right right well then why does one have to be like kept at like freezing temperatures and the other one it's not they don't they don't handle them the same i think that they licensed the base the base info mm. potentially and then there yeah. was you know a, a additional research done on top of that one's 21 okay. days apart in shots were at the pfizer and one's 28 days in part the moderna i think mm. okay well the, the um, chinese guy that developed the vaccine was like pretty pissed off that trump kept calling it the china virus i bet he's, he's like straight from china yeah and he's like come on man <laughs> like come on man yeah I don't think Chinese people like that at all. Um, Shocker. Yeah. <laughs> that old so, Kung Flu stuff bugs him. Yeah. Um, so I guess Fauci's not 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 sold yet on whether these uh, you know new, new variants will be uh, treated well with the, these vaccines. We also need to welcome a new director for the CDC who is just as much of a downer as Fauci. Dr. Rochelle Walensky said that we can expect 500,000 COVID deaths by mid-February. So that's another 100,000 in just the next month. Um, she also said, quote, and we still yet haven't seen the ramifications of what happened from the holiday travel, from holiday gatherings, in terms of high rates of hospitalizations and deaths thereafter. So she's just like, nah, you know, the holidays, we haven't seen what the, the, the bad that's coming out of that yet. So she's just another another that just is no good news. They should get uh, Fauci on SNL to do like a version of Debbie, Debbie Downer. That would slay. Yeah. That's like a just really a, good idea, Mark. Actually, yeah, yeah, I know. It Thank would you. Be. Thank you. Yeah. And I have. Let me stop you. I have to say, I don't want to release anyone's personal health information, but uh, a very loyal listener and big, big time Hardo Hive member has um, some family going through some very tough times in the hospital right now with COVID. So you know who you are, and we're, th we're thinking of you. Uh, so yeah. Oh man. Well, hope they get well. Yeah. Um, you guys want some good news? Yeah. Please. Yeah. Too bad, I don't have any. As a uh, surgeon at Texas uh, Tech has said that uh, the x-rays from COVID lungs are worse than a smoker's lungs. Dr. Brittany Bankhead Kendall, there's what it looks like. There's a normal lung, smoker's lung, and COVID lung. Dr. Brittany Bankhead Kendall tweeted, quote, post-COVID lungs look worse than any type of terrible smoker's lungs we've ever seen. And they collapse and they clot off. And the shortness of, of, breast, of breath lingers on and on. Um, yeah, don't tell me it's a shortness of breast. Shortness of breast, that'd be awful. Yeah. 
That would suck. Shortness um, of breath. It sounds like I've had COVID for about a decade. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Right around yeah. the time you started letting it go. Me yeah. too. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, but the thing is, I feel good about this because I'm. I feel like I'm a Wes. You and me are a step ahead of these assholes with our smokers' lungs. Because if you look at the chart that Wes put up on the screen, mm-hmm. Wes and I are in pretty good shape now that we haven't gotten COVID. You know what I mean? Yeah. Now, that's yeah. true. You don't have much further. You don't have much further to go. Right. I know. Yeah. That's a scary like, picture. You you want the incl- you want the the decline to be not as steep. Other other people with these great lungs are like falling off a cliff, like in the ocean, like you know. But you guys are just steadily going down slowly, so it's all good. Yeah. What the fu- Sorry to interrupt you guys, because we're all in the same neighborhood, but mm-hmm. doing the show remote. Have you guys been hearing gunshots in the neighborhood? I'm no. Hearing- no. <laughs> okay. All right. I have not. Continue, Wes. Okay. Uh, she she went on to say that you that people have had COVID and recovered may feel fine, but their long x-rays tell a different story. Quote, you'll either see a lot of that white, dense scarring, or you'll see it throughout the entire lung. Even if you're not feeling problems now, the fact that, uh, that that's on your chest x-ray is it's indicative of you probably having uh, problems later on. So COVID, even if you don't have a bad, uh, you know, bad case of it and you recover, it does still just do a number on your fucking lungs. Um, Also, L.A. County has become the first county in the U.S. to reach over one million cases. And Massachusetts has a new variant after a Boston woman who traveled to the U.K. came back with the fucking virus. So that's great. Um, Good news. Why? What did you do? You're just like Fauci today. Yeah, I was. I'm trying. I'm, I'm, I am just like Fauci, but I've got some good news before we go back to bad. Fauci did say on Sunday that Johnson and Johnson and AstraZeneca are going to be or submit their vaccine data to the FBA, uh, F- FDA. And Fauci said that we're weeks away from the third and fourth vaccine being approved for emergency use in the U.S. So more vaccines on the way in the coming weeks. Um, uh, I'll tell you what, I sure as shit am not taking the Pfizer one, uh, you know, the rushed one, uh, because in Norway, they are uh, not ruling out the possibility that f- the, the Pfizer vaccine and its side effects uh, is responsible for 23 deaths in elderly patients who died a week after taking the vaccine. Yeah, a but spokesman, you're, huh? you're, not, you're not even 40 yet. What are you worried about? Listen, I'm, I'm I know where I stand health wise. I'm not I I'm not think. In- I think that the lesson here is we can all agree that we can, you know, I can pick smoking back up today. Yeah, totally. And let's do it together because that was yeah. really why we started in the first Come place. on over and hang out and let's smoke some cigarettes. <laughs> <laughs> That's what it was about in the beginning. Yeah. Um, yeah. Don't, do, so don't the- do that. But but I might. But don't do that if you if you don't smoke. Yeah. Um, I, think, yeah. I lost you guys. Um, so. Uh, a spokesman for the Norwegian Medicines Agency said, quote, we cannot rule out that the adverse reactions to the vaccine occurring within the first days following vaccination, such as fever and nausea, may contribute to more serious course and fatal outcomes in patients with severe underlying Ill- uh, diseases. So the side effects in these really old people is like making it's it's killing them. The side effects is killing them, basically, um, from this, this this vaccine, potentially. So that's scary. Total worldwide cases, ninety five million four hundred and thirty three thousand total deaths, two million. 38,000 U.S. 24 million 400,000 deaths 407,000 um so I mean I want to have a physician on the show to talk about like specifically what are the long-term effects of COVID because Wes what you were just reporting I've heard different things I mean like that's that's what freaked me out about the the virus at the beginning of the pandemic wasn't getting it because I I don't think I'm going to die if I get it Mm -hmm. I I also don't want to spread it but the biggest thing for me was what are the what are the long-term effects that we don't yet know? Right? Yeah, I don't, yeah, I think that's the key, though, is that I don't think even if you have a, an expert physician on, I don't think they know fully the, the, the lasting impact. It's very new. Um, right. And I, I I hear you, Wes, but I am going to take the vaccine the absolute first second they let me and then going to start going on vacations again. Can't well, wait. I'll see how you do. You're going to okay. be you'll, you'll be my guinea pig. If you do Sounds well, good. I'll take it. No problem. Well, I'll, I'll keep you informed. I'll keep monitor. the whole hive informed. What's that, Pat? Mark's, Wes is going to set up a video baby monitor at Mark's house. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> keep a close eye on how he's doing. I no- That's right. notice you're snoring even louder. Uh, mm-hmm. All right, guys. So guess what? Uh, Alexei Navalny, the vocal critic and political opponent of Vladimir Putin, who has survived several poisonings from the Putin regime, including a literal poisoning of his penis, did not heed our warning, and he returned to Russia this weekend. So what is he that? doing? He went back to Russia. We right. told him what not. Is, what? Yeah. What? What is he doing? 
He's got well, he's got balls the size of Andy Reid's. Uh, if you watch the playoffs this weekend, you'll know what I'm mm-hmm. talking about. But he's not that bright. Uh, we predicted they would just kill him for uh, for real this time if he went back, and they might. But first, they want to keep tabs on him, which is why they detained him the second he landed in Moscow on Sunday. Uh, if you can't kill him with poison, at least lock him up and keep your eyes on him, right? Mm-hmm. So he just he wants to be a martyr. That's it, right? I they, think he. Yeah, I think he's been a dick at this point. I think no. I I bet that he. I bet he's he. I know this for a fact. I know that he's a behind the scenes wheeler and dealer, and I think that someone wheeled and dealt him a deal that he felt like he was cool about going back to Russia. I think that's what happened. I think they were. And like, he fell for it. Yeah. Hey, Alexi. Sorry, sorry, we tried to kill you, but come on home, and we it'll be different this time. <laughs> this Matt. time will be different. Uh, I think we have a picture here of Navalny grabbing his overhead bag on the plane as he lands in Moscow, and I, I, you may be right, Pat, because he looks very casual, like he has no idea he's about to get aggressively taken into custody. Uh, people are around him taking pictures, probably avoiding his sweat like the plague. Could you imagine if he uh, like was sitting in the inside uh, and he's trying to like pass you a cup to throw away to the to the flight attendant uh, on mm-hmm. the plane? I'm gonna I'm gonna say no i'm not going to touch any of the things he drank from or ate from uh and you know does, does putin have his family or something is that what's going on like, yeah, why is he coming back i yeah. don't know if i see navalny on my plane before takeoff i'm sprinting off the plane and yeah. insulting <laughs> insulting everyone seated on the way out i'm going to say alexi navalny's on this plane into moscow you idiots uh yeah. oh, shit. did you see <laughs> on that on that uh that plane picture you just put up there was yeah. like a lady it's become so common for the commoner to have like the uh, the selfie stick or like the uh, the the handheld gimbal for filming with their cell phones. If you see there, oh back. yeah, I see it. Yeah. yeah. Did, did you see that photo of the um, of the? I think it was a Congress person who was cleaning up the uh, the sacred room in the Capitol after all the rioters left, and he was essentially just sweeping up like um, mini tripods and uh, <laughs> and, and handheld selfie sticks. <laughs> it's like everyone's got one these days. Sorry, I everyone does have one. Yeah, um, yeah. That lady was doing a live stream saying, "Last time you'll ever see Alexei Navalny." Uh, the country's prison service said he was detained for multiple parole violations, including a term um, he had a suspended prison sentence. I guess Russia issued a warrant for the dissident. They're calling him his arrest last week saying president vladimir putin's most prominent opponent has violated terms of a 2014 prison uh, sentence for embezzlement that was uh like suspended and it was three and a half years left on it i think so they want to unsuspend it and put him in jail for three and a half years uh, apparently he was being cheered in on his flight from berlin to moscow and was treated like a huge celebrity which he kind of is right and he was uh, interviewed by several reporters who asked him if he was worried about being arrested when he landed to which he said it's impossible i'm an innocent man and to, to that i say maybe so but they tried to poison you three times alexi and they want to see your dick melt off so what yeah. is this guy not getting maybe he thinks that like he has some kind of safety in that if anything happens to him now then it'll totally be on Putin, even though everyone else already knows it's on Putin. Oh, yeah, I don't this, get time, it. this time someone will <laughs> someone get care. It. Someone I don't get care. it. Yeah. Who wins elections fairly. You know, I, I, <laughs> I don't know. I'm really surprised by this because I've done a lot of research into, like, what countries you can go to that where there's no extradition law. And Russia is by far the most developed large-scale country that there's no extradition. But then, like, you think about committing a crime and living in Russia for the rest of your life. That fucking sucks. This guy's out of Russia, and he's going back to his his knee, his like certain death. How good could Russia be? Like not Everyone's that good. Tr- treating him like yeah, no, that's that Germany's great. He, they were treating him like a king over there too, I think. And uh, he was in Berlin, and now he's back in jail in Moscow. Oh, by the way, um, whatever he was told, uh, the plane was supposed to land at Moscow's Vanukovo Airport, where plenty of his supporters and journalists were there to welcome Navalny. But guess what, guys? The plane made an unscheduled and unexplained landing and turned. Uh, and took him to an airport 25 miles away, where they then took him right straight to custody. So he's he's so he's already <laughs> getting yeah, just wrecking. absolutely fucked. Planes do that all the time. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. no, that airport's a little yeah. full. Go to oh my movie. god, I, I think they have him in like a uh, like in a bunker where they're just like trying every type of poison and just staring at him to see if it takes. They're like pull his <laughs> dick back out, and yeah. they're just like, slapping a new poison in him. Um, yeah, we'll update you when he's declared dead. All right, guys. <laughs> Mark's going to hate this story. Uh, Jamie Lynn Spears, the sister of Britney Spears, and the creepy combination of her parents' names, Jamie and Lynn, is blaming Elon Musk for murdering her cats, uh, calling Tesla uh, cars a, quote, secret cat killer. 
That's like my nightmare. <laughs> yeah. So the former Zoe 2.0 star said in a uh, since deleted Instagram video that her cats were run over by a Tesla they never heard coming. Uh, saying, quote, <laughs> come on, I swear to God. Yeah. Mm-hmm. And uh, I, I pulled the video to play. And then I said, no, because she sounded super pilled out and her hair was dyed like bright purple, as was her toddler daughter's hair dyed bright purple. Anyway, she said, uh, I'll do the, my best impression. She goes, because she, she was she was also like eating a piece of candy. It was really weird. Are we sure those cats didn't commit suicide? Sounds great. Well, yeah, I don't know, bro. Because of uh, her being the owner. Because we've now lost like I don't even want to tell you how many cats because they don't hear the Tesla crank and unfortunate things happen and it's really devastating and tragic for everyone involved. <laughs> Elon Musk, let's figure this out. You owe me a couple cats. <laughs> no, she, she did not. She's like, that she sounds letter. like Pam Oliver. 100%. I know. Yeah. Did you guys see that Pam Oliver over the weekend? Yeah. yeah. I don't think it was. I don't think she was drunk. It no. couldn't have been because they kept bringing her back on. They wouldn't. They wouldn't have done that. I think it was a medical thing. Yeah. I know. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, that's a bummer. I didn't see bummer. that. Um, but yeah, I mean, you ex- you don't expect that from Pam Oliver. You do expect that from Kenner, Louisiana's uh, biggest celebrities, the Spearses. Yeah. Uh, but yeah, no, uh, I guess Tesla's been taking her cats. She did come up with a great idea, which is to have Tesla make a high pitched noise that only animals can hear when the car cranks on. And as it turns out, guys, Tesla and other electric cars are required to do this. As of September 2020, the U.S. National Highway Traffic Safety Administration now requires electric cars to emit a sound of at least 43 decibels when they're traveling at speeds of less than 18.6 miles per hour. Jamie Lynn's busting uh, Elon Musk on not being up to regulations. No, I mean, she might own she might own an older Tesla. And Jamie okay. Lynn did start by saying, I know there's bigger problems in the world right now. Right. But like, it's, yeah, but like you can afford a Tesla. And unfortunately, the Tesla's killing your cats. But like, this is bullshit, by the way, guys, because cats, yes, they can't hear the car, but they can hear the tire on the pavement. You can't uh, quiet that away no matter how quiet the engine is. It's a fucking animal. The cat knows the car is coming. Like cats yeah. are very aware animals. Someone was on pills and hit the car. Hit it's the like cat. my biggest fear. That's why my cats don't don't go outside. Is yeah. is a car. Well, it's one thing to have the cat like in the engine block, which happens from time to time. But like the cat would is not going to get run over if it hears rubber on pavement is enough to scare the cat away. I'm just saying. Yeah. Uh, but no. You would uh, think. Yeah. So uh, car, electric cars, I guess, are supposed to make the sound of like a dishwasher, right? Forty three decibels. Um, Jamie Lynn later deleted the post and walked back her claims, saying that she did not run over any cats and Tesla's not to be blamed. Several news outlets reported that the actress made it clear that user error was admittedly involved. Uh, mm-hmm. Author's note: She sounded like she was on pills. Guys, so did she? Did she? Was she the ones that hit the cat? Was she? Did she hit the cats? Or? She said she didn't hit the cats, but she uh-huh. said that it was a Tesla issue. It also sounds like maybe there's like someone on her property that hates the cats and keeps running them over, and is like, it's because the Tesla. Is it her dealer? I don't know, dude. Uh, hey guys, let's kick it over to our sponsor, Stamps.com. Uh, I love Stamps.com. If you don't know, uh, Stamps.com is a, is a website that is uh, essentially run by the USPS, and you can print postage directly from Stamps.com, so it makes shipping like super easy. I've been using Stamps.com for years with all of my businesses. Essentially, like back in the day, if you wanted to ship something out to uh, – a package, something larger than a letter, right? You'd have to like go to the post office, go to FedEx, go to UPS, and or like FedEx has their like subscription service, but it's fucking complicated as fuck. Stamps.com, you can literally print the thing out on your printer. I have a little postal scale. They'll send you a free one if you sign up. Uh, but you print the thing out on your printer, you put in the box dimensions. USPS is pretty regulated in terms of like the size of the box and the weight. It's really easy to figure out. You slap that fucker on there and bam, the postman just picks it up. It's awesome. Oh, and you can man. track it. There's nothing worse than going to the post office to drop off mail. So this is nice. Yeah, it's absolutely amazing. Uh, and honestly, guys, I've just been using it for like probably five or six years now. And it's my go to uh, when you guys got stickers. Uh, we mm-hmm. use stamp.com to mail those. Uh, you can do individual uh, individual stamps or you can do it just one offs per package. Stamps.com brings the service, the U.S. Postal Service and UPS right to your computer. Wherever you are, Stamps.com is a must-have for any business, whether you're a small uh, office sending out invoices, an online seller shipping out orders, or a giant warehouse. Uh, yeah, like I don't know if you guys have ever worked in the post business. Like I've worked at, like stuffing envelopes and stuff. You used to have to go to like Pitney Bowes and pay like a million bucks for their machines to like mm-hmm. do mailings from your office. Now you just do it with your printer. It's amazing. Uh, you can get pr- postage 24-7. You don't have to wait. If you're a night owl like me, you can take care of your printing at night. 
which I like to do. And with stamps.com, you get five cents off every first class just, stamp. Just me and the printing. No one else is awake. That's, well, Mark, you joke, but that's something that I enjoy very much. Yeah. Uh, yeah, you get five stamps. Even the insects are asleep. Yeah, it's just me and printing. <laughs> Guys, with stamps.com, you get five cents off you and your first class stamps uh, and up to 40% off priority mail. Uh, not to mention it's a fraction of the cost. Stamps.com is a no-brainer, saving you time and money. Uh, so check it out, guys. Make 2021 the year you stop wasting time. Go to the post office and go to stamps.com. There's no risk. And with uh, our code hard factor, one word, you get a special offer that includes a four-week trial plus free postage, a digital scale, no long-term commitment. So guys, do this. Go to stamps.com. Click on the microphone. Uh, at the top of the homepage and type in hard factor that's stamps.com promo code hard factor for real it's like christmas cards uh if you like to stay in touch with with your family birth announcements stamps that comes the shit just just get on it yeah saves you a lot of time um all right uh i'd like to apologize for that pam oliver joke if it was if she is having a medical issue um, yeah, see, it was, tri- it, was, it was no, it's not funny if it's a medical issue. It was tricky. I was trying to navigate that on Twitter and I worded it to give myself an out, not just calling her a drunk ass because I'd, I right. think it was a medical emergency. Okay. It was, yeah. I, I take it back then. Take it back. Um, all right. All right, guys. Uh, what's the worst thing that your, your son can do to you outside of killing you? Outside of killing you? Yeah. Tell, uh, when you, tell, 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 the, tell his mother the shit you do. I mean, I think the worst thing you could do to you is like be a psychopath. That would be the worst thing that you could do to you, I think. Uh, well, if you said steal your wife and uh, get her pregnant, leaving you to take care of their five adopted kids, you would be right. Uh, I was wrong. Yeah, yeah, was yeah. Wrong. yeah. Uh, because that's what happened to one poor close. bastard. I was getting there. <laughs> <laughs> uh, that's what happened to one poor bastard in Russia after his weight loss influencer wife, 35-year-old Marina Balsha, Balmasheva, Balmasheva, who had over 500,000 followers on Instagram and uh, who is marrying her 21 year old stepson and having his baby uh Bubba, okay. you fly- yeah okay mm-hmm. i'm sorry stepson this, stepson this, this is a total fucking symptom of porn porn hubs just oh just pandemic of of uh step porn just it's, 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 it's too uh, much it's too much everywhere you go is stepmom stepsister stepdad yeah. it's everywhere you know what Here's they're the happy t- couple for you. Oh, they look yeah. they look happy. They're even uh Pat, they're even taking old porns and just re slapping a new title on them. Stepmom and stepdad. I'm like, no, they're right. not. That's like those are famous porn stars. I used to beat off to this. Yeah, this I used to beat off to this same clip and it wasn't titled Stepmom and Stepdad. Yeah, it's true. <laughs> um here's here's what's fucked up is that so here's a picture of her uh that's that's with her husband, who is the the father of this guy she's now marrying before she lost the weight. Um, and then here's after she lost the weight and got some surgery because she wanted to make herself more sexually appealing to her 21 year old stepson named uh, Vova. <laughs> That's why she um, did it. And and here is a picture of uh, her and her stepson when he was seven, who she started raising him when he was seven, fucking seven. And there's a picture of uh, them now. So that's that's the, the most disturbing. She's thing. patient. She's very patient. But the kid was seven when he came into her life. Um, and uh, so the, the, Vova's dad, Alexi, said that his ex-wife seduced his son when he was home from college on a break. Um, and like I said, got plastic surgery, an Andy, uh, abdominoplasty, abdominoplasty after excessive skin, after losing the weight, Botox, other shit. Um, that guy's yeah. got to be pretty upset, huh? Yeah, he's got to be real upset. Yeah. Um, you know, yeah, where it, do you go? Like, you go to Mars. You- who yeah. do you go to? You have no you have no place to turn. You hope you got a drinking buddy or something who for their sake hope you hope that they hope that he's not a murderer, that drinking buddy. Because wow. you it leaves you no no place to go. You'll never trust another human again. No. Like not I mean, not fully. I mean, how can she, how can you do that? That's I mean, it's your own dad and you're stealing his wife and 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 uh <laughs> fucking his wife and having a kid with her for fuck's sake it's, it's crazy bad. yeah what, there's just, a, oh they're oh they're having a kid together now? they're having a bit uh, yeah what do you say with the ball masheva that makes me thinking uh, like that's that sounds like a nice friday uh with manscape to ball masheva <laughs> ball masheva yeah what Marina ball masheva. so okay so let's figure this out so yeah that's a step son banging the step mom and having mm-hmm. a child thereby making that his brother son Right, that kid's life's ruined before it's even started. Yeah, the, the, it's uncle. The kid is. Oh my god, I don't even know how to fucking what what the it would be. The kid is a bro, is the is the is the uh, the stepson's brother son. The new brother. Bro, I like brother son. Oh, step brother son. Okay. Step brother son. Step brother son. Yeah. Well, 
<laughs> I mean, they better. Yeah, it, it's it's terrible. Um, it's so. not great. No, it's, it's terrible. Great. Um, so yeah, uh, that's that's they look that's so all. Happy, there is. Though. You know how- they look very happy. I mean, he's happy. You can tell the kids. The kids happy. Um, and you she know looks that happy. Quote, the quote you gave from MLK, it be nice to people. If you work yeah. with the, this this guy that <laughs> that got left, be nice to him if, you, if right. you're around him. Yeah, well, if he's still well, alive. How yeah. do you go back? Like, I'm just trying to think about what it was like when we were 21. Like any girl that we were hooking up with, you'd go back to one of us, be like, yeah, bro, let me tell you all you all about it. I'm having a baby with my stepmom. Like, how are his buddies? Like, yeah, they're you know? probably like, whoa, whoa. I, yeah. I tried to find some comments on her Instagram, but there was it was all in Russian, and I'm sure not very nice. But um, you didn't translate it, okay? No, didn't translate it. Good luck. There's a bunch of good lucks. Yeah. Oh, happy couple. Yeah, no, I don't think too many people are happy for him. Um, no. no. Nope. So. Nope. Nope. Okay, guys, I have a double animal one for you. Let's go on a safari, shall we? Why the fuck not? Yeah, uh, unfortunately, Will is not here to do this story as we we're going to go take a trip down under for an update. Mm. Uh, again, Will's in the hospital right now, we think, and we are expecting to hear some great news soon from him. We are thinking of Will and his wife for sure right now and excited for the Hard Factor family to grow in size. Mm. Uh, and speaking of excited, do you guys remember Joe the Pigeon? The story Will actually did, I think, on Friday's episode. Yes. No. Eight, oh, yeah. 8,000 miles Joe from the Oregon. Pigeon. Yeah, he was trending worldwide over the weekend. Exactly, Wes. Joe was found in a garden in Melbourne wearing a U.S. identification tag on his leg. And Australia said, wow, look at that crazy pigeon. He traveled almost 10,000 miles to get here. It's a shame we have to kill him now because he breached Australia's strict quarantine protocol. Mm -hmm. So... They're like, yes. what a what a crazy trip he took. Let's kill him. A spokesperson for Australia's Department of Agriculture, Water and the Environment and horrible person said the only possible outcome to manage the biosecurity risk is humane destruction of the bird. So they're just going to put it down. But guess what, guys? Turn twist in the story. I'm not Shyamalan style. Joe's ID tag showed. Uh, well, let me get the, 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 it showed he was a racing pigeon registered to an owner in Alabama and that he went missing after an October 2020 pigeon race in Oregon, like Wes said. But. Wait, Australia is now saying it looks like the ID tag is a fake and the bird is just a local breed that only exists in Australia and is therefore a local bird with no biosecurity risk. And so it's just he's fine. It was so just a hoax. Yet, it was a whole thing's a hoax. You no, know, no, they're not going to kill him now. They, they found out before they, they put him down that it was just a complete bullshit. They're playing with tag. pigeons lives out there, <laughs> man. Like they're right. playing with pigeons lives. Yeah, they the got show, a conscience. The pigeon named after Joe Biden is not going to be killed. No word on why a fake ID tag was placed on fake Joe. Also, the breed of pigeon that fake Joe is a Turkish tumbler. Uh, they, uh, it is not a breed for flying long distances. They're bred for tricks in the air. So they're like show birds, really, according to Lars Scott from Pigeon Rescue Melbourne. He didn't elaborate on what types, what breeds of pigeon, pigeons do fly 10,000 miles, uh, mm-hmm. but I don't think there are that many. Um, it's not going to be harmed. Who knows? Uh, maybe it was a flashy show pigeon that was annoying a local that said i'll show you i'll print an elaborate fake id ban from another country and mm-hmm. uh, let you get reported to authorities who will have no choice but to euthanize you humanely instead of just taking care of you myself yeah how but did sh- you- shame on the bird experts on this one they didn't right that's spot how did this go so far how did this go so far how yeah. did this go so far i don't i don't understand i don't understand it should have been it. shut down day fucking one bird this yeah. is like what bird experts live for right this is like a bird like, say, trying- well actually yeah, yeah. It's like trying to get into a concert with like a fake wristband, but it's just <laughs> just a yeah. bird, bird with a fake ID on the leg. Uh, it's, Shame it's, on them. It's an Australian only breed of bird. <laughs> um, next and last stop on the safari is a little more aggressive. We are headed over to Colombia, where an aggressive animal is taking an aggressive drug and aggressively breeding. I, of course, am referring to Pablo Escobar's cocaine hippos who he flew in the 80s uh, and 90s uh, illegally and are obviously not native to Colombia. Look how big mm-hmm. they can get. They are now reproducing at a rapid rate and just fucking up everything in their path. They have become the largest invasive species on the planet as they are generally well over 3,000 pounds, the largest hippo ever recorded being 9,900 pounds. Jesus. Yeah, that's a big boy. Why uh, they call no, them cocaine? Just do, do they do cocaine or just because? No, were... no. It was just Esc- Escobar liked hippo, so he flew him into his little seven thousand cocaine acre ranch. Um, and, and so 
a couple quotes here from Natalie Castel Blanco Martinez. Um, they says, uh, nobody likes the idea of shooting a hippo, but we have to accept that no other strategy is going to work. Uh, that's what the ecologist said. We're going to need to get bigger guns as well. Uh, basically, mm -hmm. what happened was the authorities raided Escobar's 7,000 acre estate in Medellin and shot him to death in 1993. And they found a private zoo there and captured most of the exotic animals, but four hippos escaped. And over the past three decades, the number of inbred hippos has increased to the hundreds. Uh, and scientists project that it'll get into the thousands uh, by 2024. So, so. right. And I guess are these, do, do they sell Escobar's estate or are they like creeping on other people's estates? Is oh, yeah, they left. Wrong? No, I mean, like they, they, they got all the all the animals on his estate and put them in other zoos or killed them if they needed to, you know, euthanized them or whatever. But four hippos just were like, nah, dog. And they just went off into the wild and were never captured. And then they started breeding. And now they're just everywhere. So they, 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 cannot, they can find most of these hippos. They're saying they also pose a threat to the natural wildlife because apparently hippos' urine and feces are toxic, including up to being toxic to humans. So they like any anyone th that comes in contact with with their pee and poop is in trouble. And um, while the ecologist said they needed to start shooting the hippos with high caliber rounds, David Echeverry Lopez, a gov government environmentalist, environmentalist said if they uh, you know acted quickly enough or if they act quickly right now and give us the right tools, we can just cut off all the hippos' dicks and balls, castrating mm -hmm. them before they take over. Uh, it's getting to the point, though, where castration is looking unlikely and they're going to have to go with the cull. So if anyone has an experience castrating enormous animals and has a soft spot in their hearts for hippos, get your ass to Columbia with your castration suitcase yesterday interesting okay jesus christ hippo is a pretty badass animal yeah well i, I would imagine you'd have to trank the hippo before you cut its dick off right how with what I mean, you, know? you know i don't know so that's a tough gig they're like rhino like skin i think I'm just know running at it and it. slicing at it with the machete like get over here all right guys <laughs> in a, for our final story uh in a quick note politicians are back to politicking again Remember uh, when uh, January 6th, when all those assholes invaded the Capitol, and then it looked like uh, our, our collective Congress was gaining, uh, I don't know, some sort of common sense and a conscience where they were coming together and uh, decreeing or decrying the terrible behavior. Well, that lasted about a week. Southern Bell and South Carolina Senator Lindsey Graham made an appearance on Fox News' Sunday morning futures where Graham said this, Bubba, if you could play the clip, us to see people come yes. and take over the Capitol, the House and the Senate, beat officers, defile the seat of government. How in the hell could that happen? Where was Nancy Pelosi? It's her job to provide capital security. We'll get to the bottom of that to my Republican colleagues. Blaming it on Nancy Pelosi, you fucking asshole. Uh, where were you? Uh, where was everyone, you piece of shit? And that's going to do it for he Hard sh Factor. He should, he should have done it that at the beginning. Why did, <laughs> he say all the, why did he wait this long? He should have said that at the beginning. Because he fucking, he's right back to fucking politicking. Cause they, they, he's a they, flopper. They, dude, those motherfuckers just need to fucking get that shit together. Are you seriously blaming Pelosi right now? It's not one person's fault, you dickhead. Just fucking figure it out. Figure well, it out, you fucking assholes. The no, good it's news, not good for our country right now. It's no, not good for our country. No, the, the uh, inauguration's in a couple days, but the good news is that there wasn't like much violence reported over the weekend, right? So that's good. Yeah, hopefully, but dude, there's hopefully. so much. There's so much uh, military and FBI yeah. and Good. CIA that, and yeah. everyone in the in the Capitol. Yeah, we'll see, guys. Uh, I just I also love that these guys are uh, the same guys that if you say the word terrorist around them, they're like, "Where is he? I'll kill him!" Oh shit, I became one. God damn it! Uh, and that's gonna do it for Hard Factor. Thank you guys so much for listening. Um, hey, uh, if we hear that big willie smith is having his baby please make sure to shower him with uh love on the social media's hard hive because that is super exciting and super awesome and we cannot wait and we're we couldn't be happier for him and his lady that's absolutely amazing uh as wes said at the top of the show it's martin luther king jr day so um celebrate that man do something good for your neighbor uh do something good for humankind in america uh give us a follow I'm not equating this to doing something good, but I could be. I don't know. It was <laughs> yeah, <follow>. yeah. <laughs> it's good to us. It's good at, for us. Yeah. At Hard Factor News, at Hard Factor West, at Hard, Hard Factor Mark, at Hard Factor Pat, at Hard Factor Will. And uh, if you haven't, guys, uh, check out our Patreon. So, yeah, we're independent now, and we have this thing, Patreon. It's awesome. Where there's three different tiers you can join. It's a monthly subscription service. It gets you access to uh, two shows, a uh, the Hardo Radio, Hardo Hive Radio Hour, 
uh, and then Florida Man Friday, uh, depending on the tier, and then our Discord chat, uh, monthly uh, happy hours with the boys, discounts on merch, a bunch of other stuff. So check that out, patreon.com slash hardfactor. Uh, Big time. Oh, also, uh, go easy on the smooth move. Ease your way into smooth move, T. Mark found another way to bring his bowel movements onto the show. Well, at it, was the a end. Big, it was a big part, big part of my day today, Pat. Right, <laughs> oh, let you know. Have <laughs> a great <laughs> fucking day, guys. <laughs>